Hi Digmates, it's Dominique and we now have the latest base core and firmware version, version 0.3.3. Now in my last video, I talked about version 0.3.1. We didn't skip 0.3.2, we had 0.3.2, but then made new changes with the texts and a few more modifications on some of the features. And now we have 0.3.3. I've already downloaded the new base core and I just like to show you what we have that's new and you can see it already we have reintroduced the dark mode into base core so i'm gonna click connect you can actually see it if you go to preferences and then at the bottom advanced there's an option for you to select dark mode light mode or if you want base core to follow the settings of your system which is what I've done. But before we jump into the new features, let me just remind you guys that you need to update your keyboard's firmware so all of the bug fixes and new features can be implemented into your keyboard. So as you can see here, it says your race is currently ver running version 0.3.1. I want it to run 0.3.3. We've added this new instruction reminding you guys that you need to have at least one backup of all your layers just in case. Now let's begin the countdown. As it turns zero and as the lights turn off, I'm gonna press escape and hold it. The neuron is flashing. I'm gonna let go. And I should be back to my layer zero and the firmware has flashed successfully. Yes. Whew. All right, so let's go to preferences. This is where we've added a few new parameters for the dual function keys and the mouse keys. If you already have 0.3.1, you would have already seen this. But what we've added is the default selection. Now you can see where the default is. Just a little brief explanation of what some of these parameters are. Adjust time to start the when held action. So basically, if you want to shift to another layer and you want to have the keyboard wait half a second until it shifts to another layer, you would probably put it here. And if you save that, if you check out my keyboard, once I hold my shift to layer key, it waits a bit until it shifts to another layer. See? However, if I decrease that uh, number, and send changes to the race, it'll shift to my other layer quite quickly. And then you have the adjust overlap threshold between dual function key and subsequent key. You can read more about this here. You have more info in the link there. And basically this sets a variable that allows you, the user, to roll over from a Q key, a Q key, which is the dual function key, to the subsequent key. The percentage is actually the allowance you're giving your keyboard to recognize the overlap between two keys. You might not notice this if, you, if you're not really a fast typist, but if you're a very fast typist, this might be a parameter that you'd like to experiment. Then we have the mouse speed. We have the initial speed, which is measured in pixels, the delay between steps. The higher the number, the slower the mouse movement. So just to give you guys an example, we have the initial speed at, let's say the initial speed is at 59, and then we'll put this at 63. Just see how it looks. As you can see, it's a bit slow. What you'd want is to put this at a lower value and just try to experiment. Whoa how you want the, the mouse speed to be. Now the overall speed limit is the maximum speed limit of your mouse movement. We have the mouse acceleration, which is the acceleration after the initial speed, acceleration delay between steps. Again, the higher the number, the slower the mouse movement. And then we have the wheel speed. These are the new preferences, new parameters that you can play with on your race. And we've also included a search box in the key configuration menu. So you can search for the key you want. We've also integrated the dark mode into the macro editor. 
And now the maximum amount of macros you can have is 64. Other than that, we've also improved the Electron version to V12. And this means that there's more stability when it comes to updating your firmware and when running base core. We've also updated the serial port and USB libraries. And we've also added a dialog box for Linux users for when they open base core and run it. They are asked to input their system's password and then the UDEV rules are installed into their computer and they can then run base core flawlessly afterwards. If you want more information about the changes we've done with base core 0.3.3, you can head over to our GitHub or just check the link in the description below. That's all for now. Catch you in the next one. Thanks.